Hello and welcome to another Build and Paint video. This time we'll be tackling the Panhard AMD 178 armoured car. This is an old kit made by Albi. And as you can see it's pretty short run. The parts aren't that detailed and you can tell by the nature of the sprues that they look pretty simple. Nevertheless certain aspects of this model look pretty good. It was also released by Dragon in the 1990s. The Panhard 178 was a 4x4 reconnaissance vehicle. It was armoured and used by the French Army cavalry units in World War II. It was equipped with a 25mm main gun and also had a 7.5mm coaxial machine gun. Let's get on with the build. Even if it's a short run kit, the tools and techniques are exactly the same. You need to detach all the parts from the sprue, which we did using cutters or scalpel blades. And with a variety of sanding sticks on hand, all the pieces can be cut out and then tidied up. It's just a case of removing any residue from the sprue gates. Gluing was done using Plastic Magic Liquid Glue and Tamiya Liquid Glue, and we clamped the hull together as necessary. This is a little glue applicator brush by Deluxe Materials. A barrel was replaced because that was really poorly defined and badly detailed. A new barrel was sourced online from Schatten Modelbau in Germany. Attaching it was a case of removing all the old barrel components and gradually sanding away and test fitting. Then it was a case of drilling out a hole so that we could actually emplace the gun barrel. That was fairly easy and was done using a Minicraft mini drill. We've done a video on all these power tools if you're interested. Once drilled out it was a simple case of gluing the brass replacement barrel into the hole. Obviously you want to try and make sure that it's all straight and properly aligned. We blocked off the back of that component on the turret and then attached the kit part and filled in the gaps with plastic putty by Deluxe Materials. This is a water-based putty that's very easy to work with and easy to clean up. Here's the progress on the model so far. Even if it is an old simple kit, you can see it's coming together nicely. There's that barrel in place and the turned brass piece was a big improvement. And as you can see, a lot of the detailing is actually quite respectable for the age. A big drawback are the wheels. They're poorly detailed, very simple plastic items. So some aftermarket resin ones were ordered from Hazar Productions of Canada. They're really beautifully moulded and excellent, a big improvement. One of the drawbacks is the moulding process itself and there was a fairly large plug on the base of all the wheels. It was just a simple case then of scribing in the detail that had been removed by the moulding process. For this we used Tamiya's scriber but also scalpel blades and Revel's precision razor saws. As you can see, it was fairly easy to reinstate the detail. Not perfect, but a big improvement. And here's a test fitting. Like with the plastic wheels, they are not poseable, you can't steer them, and you just have to attach them. Options are limited, all you can do is have them pointing straight forwards. Either way, we did the same process on the four other wheels, and the results were pretty pleasing. As you can see, it really brings the model to life and makes it look a lot better. 
the enhanced level of detail really helps improve the overall look of the kit. On to painting. The idea of this build was to use AK's new real colours, mainly for a video review but also out of interest. Also used were their surface primers and we started off with a generous coat of their grey primer. This went on well through the Iwata TR2 airbrush. As per usual you just spray it on gently, don't try and saturate the whole thing but build up that generous coat over several passes. It's a good primer and the overall effect was one of a smooth and unified primer coat. Additional passes were undertaken and then we got some of their black primer and shaded the underside. That was just to add a shadow effect. To improve the finish, various sanding tools were used and little details were improved. What you look for are little hairs and bits of dust and all that sort of muck that gets trapped in a primer coat. And that was gently sanded away or removed with a scalpel. Next we did a little bit of pre-shading, not as much as on the last video you saw, but just a little bit in the shadow areas with black. Just to provide a bit of relief and then we touched up and infilled with a bit more grey to tone it all down. Nevertheless it remains in the deepest shadow areas. Here you can see the primer coat being sanded. This is a good primer because it tolerates sanding quite well, it doesn't rip or peel and was easy to paint over with a little bit more of the primer. The wheels obviously fell off and here you can see they're actually pinned in two places. This is why you can't steer those wheels or change their direction. Anyhow we added a metal pin just to make it a bit stronger and reattached one of the wheels that fell off. Okay on to the AK Interactive real colour paints. They're lacquer paints and you can watch our video for more information. And now we're ready to try out the AK Real Colours range. We've gone for this reference, Dunkul Gel, dark yellow, it's a variant, RC062, and we'll probably lighten it with some off-white a bit later. So you can see they're pretty fluid. As you can tell that's a little bit too thick to use in an airbrush, so we're going to use the high compatibility thinner. Put about the same amount again of thinner. We mixed about 80 20 at the moment, I'll put a little bit more. What we'll do is we'll put our mask on and spray, but you can see it's a lot more milky. We'll start spraying onto the model using this here just so you can see what it's like but then we'll put the mask on and spray in the spray booth. Here we go. So it's a two bar. We'll just start building up the paint. See just how good the coverage is. Because they're lacquers the coverage is really good. We're just going to remove the turret. So we'll do all this top portion. Very reminiscent of the Tamiya paints. Similar sort of formulation, but coverage and pigmentation is excellent. Okay. Here we're using our Iwata Eclipse and just filling in and finishing off the paint coat. Again, this is not a wet coat, this is just on top of the primer in thin passes. Generally, a mask is advisable in addition to the extractor, and that's what we'll generally do.
Now it's time to lighten it a bit to create contrast and variation. So the off-white is added to the base coat. Only a small amount, but just enough to ensure that the turret can be painted in a slightly different shade as if it was painted at a different stage in construction or overhaul. And just ended up slightly more worn and faded than the rest of the body. This is of course in German colours and these were repurposed from the French vehicle park when France capitulated. So they were conceivably overhauled and brought to German standards. In the process they would have been sprayed with whatever paint supplies were on hand. The intention here is just to show a uniform Dunkelgel paint scheme and often we find those are the most interesting to paint. But in order to make a uniform scheme interesting we're going to use a technique called modulation. Essentially this involves picking out different separate components in lighter shades and creating a really strong contrast as you'll see. The first step is to use something like a black plastic mask and you can use that very simply just to break up the model and using the lighter shade of the base coat you can mask and spray individual components. If you look at this side access door that's what we've done and it makes the door stick out from the rest of the model. At this stage the turret is the most striking contrast. As progress is made you will see that more and more components are going to be picked out in lighter shades. Step one therefore is to get some masking done. We'll be using Tamiya masking tape for that. It doesn't have an aggressive adhesive so it won't pull off paint, it won't damage the underlying paint coats. It was just a case of masking off all the different components, areas where we wanted to create contrast. On the engine deck, the engine grills were masked off to create separation. It's just a case of gently applying the masking around the items you want to spray. With that done we can start spraying the contrast. First of all a different shade of Dunkelgelb was used from the AK Real Colors range just to get a bit of variety. That was sprayed very loosely over some of the components. Next, it was back to the original Dunkelgelb dark yellow variant and more off-white was added. This time going for a much lighter finish. It was put into the airbrush and carefully sprayed between all the masking tape and over the components. Where there was risk of overspray, the black plastic card mask was used again, and what you end up with are subtly defined components.
you can see the sort of effect that is intended. Further components like the mudguard storage boxes were picked out in lighter shades. And the modulation process continues. Here's the driver's hatch before and after. And again, all the little pieces that make up the model are picked out in the lighter shade. Just work your way around the model and build up areas of modulated or separated colour. With the spraying done, it's time to pick out even more fine detail using a brush. The AK Real Colors brush paint very well, and for this kind of job, they're perfect. You can see all the little details are being picked out and again this heightens the effect of modulation. It will look almost strange or kind of unnatural at this stage. However you'll see that later on this is really quite effective in creating all sorts of contrast and uh, sort of three dimensionality. And here you can see that effect. To pick out the tyres we use Life Colours black colour set. The advantage of the life colours is they brush on really well and flat for this sort of detail painting. Next stage was we use some tensor chroms and occasionally some pigments from the liquid pigments range to add a bit of contrast and here you can see a panel that was painted in tensor chrome rust shades just to make it look a bit different. And then everything was sealed with Johnson's clear or if you don't have clear you can use any kind of varnish. This just creates a barrier and preserves everything for the processes to come. Decals. These were taken from a few kits. Most of the ones in the Albi kit were long gone. And they were applied using Microset and Microsol in the usual way. The key really is to ensure that they're cut out from the carrier film and bedded down properly using something like a Q-tip or cotton bud. On to the fun part, the weathering. The first step was to create some kind of dark wash. This creates a shadow or relief effect. And for that liquid pigments were used from Life Colour. They're removable and blendable and where you might ordinarily use an enamel wash these are a good alternative. They don't smell, there's no toxicity, they're really easy to use yet they behave a bit like oils or enamels. As you can see you apply them and it goes on in the usual fashion, kind of like a pin wash. Don't worry about those ugly tide marks, as you'll see they are very easily blended. Just get it around all the details at this stage. A 
And then, using the remover that comes in the Life Color Liquid Pigment sets, you can very easily blend it. It reactivates the paint and allows you just to blend everything, remove tide marks, smooth everything out. You can leave it as kind of a dirty, grimy finish, or you can completely remove it, depending on how much you work them with the remover product. They really do behave like oils. It's actually quite strange that there's no smell like you'd have with oils and thinners. Yet you have a similar level of control. Maybe slightly less, but very similar. There you can see the bottom hull is already starting to look nicely weathered. Yet the turret is still in the original finish and you can see how the modulation is completely blended in through the dark wash. Here there's a thick application of the dark pigments and here a more localised application. In both cases you apply it and then tweak the finish using brushes laden with the remover. The attempt here is to get sort of vertical streaks and rain marks. There's progress so far and it's looking pretty grimy with those black streaks. So a thick brush with more remover just toned it down a bit more. The model was sprayed with rain marks and soot from the Life Colour Liquid Pigments range. And that just toned everything down and again it can be adjusted as you apply it. Life Colour recommends sealing between liquid pigment applications. However, we've found it's easier just to keep going. Generally, once they're dry, they're a bit tougher to remove so you can use that to your advantage. Here you can see it's ever so slightly more dusty and blended thanks to that light coat of rain marks. Next, using rust references from the same range, little areas of rust are applied, particularly around doors and areas of heavy wear. And then, again, using the remover and a wide brush, you can blend it. You can see this has dried a little more, but it's still just as blendable. It gives nice rust streaks. Meanwhile, the rain marks reference was applied in vertical streaks and then blended in the same fashion but it creates lighter vertical streaks similar to sort of dust that's run down the model when it's rained. If we slow it down you can see the application process. First paint on your streak then moisten your brush with remover and draw it down vertically. To get a really pleasing dust effect on the wheels, dark dust was used. Again, it's a liquid pigment, so it's blendable, and that runs really well into all the treads. It looks quite stark now, but when it dries, you'll see that it gives a very subtle, dusty, road dust effect on the wheels.
it's too heavy, remember you just use the remover and it's very easily blended and smoothed out. And here's the overall effect. Now with the airbrush turned right down using the MAC valve that you can just see on the front of the airbrush, dark mixes of liquid pigments were just stippled all around the edges to create little oil spots and areas of dust. Next stage we reverted to enamels and we used enamel washes from the Wilder range. This is a more conventional pin wash you can see us applying. You take the weathering washes and thin them down using thinners and just very gently apply a pin wash around areas of shadow. You can also use them to create oil spills a bit like we've done here. This just improves the level of definition around detail and represents collections of dirt and muck. With the pressure turned down further this diesel reference was added to a bit of thinners and again it was stippled on to create tiny little spots of oil and grime. Then using their murky water, which is essentially a gloss varnish, various dark washes were put in the palette and just mixed to create slightly satiny oil stains and further pin washes. You can see it being applied around the hub, an area that would be sort of greased and oiled and maintained. Again, you can work all the rivet details and other details and create streaks. Around the wheel hubs you can create oil runs. With a bit more murky water added you can create more dark washes around details and that's what's happening here. Time for mud next, we used brown mud splatter from Wilder and that was sprayed through just gently at low pressure to create a kind of dusty film at the bottom of the model. You can also stipple it on by turning the airbrush down to very low pressure to get spots of dirt and dust. Here's progress and the modulation is really quite faded now and looks slightly more authentic. Stony dark brown mud was then flicked on from a long bristled flat brush to create projections of dark mud at the rear of the panhard. And you can see the effect there. Putting it on a base helps to see how it's all progressing and it's starting to look good. Next though, it was decided to add a bit more definition to the high points and this uses the technique of dry brushing. Using oil paints from the Wilder range, we mixed up a light coat, sort of somewhere near the original Dunkel Gelb and just when there's hardly any left on the brush you just run it over the details. You can watch our video on dry brushing if you want to find out more. This leaves a subtle highlight on all the high points and relief. Anything you're not happy with can of course be tidied up very easily with thinners. In this case some of the details and dry brushing on the front was being toned down. Next spills and moisture can be added using murky water again, thin it down, but you can just apply it around 
any areas of the model that might see rain runoff or oil spills or fuel spills. And that will get more subtle as it dries and just leave a very gentle sheen. It was decided to add a bit more definition to the engine grills and for that Tamiya panel line accent colour was used. It's a great little enamel based product that you can easily apply and then you just clean it off with a bit of thinners. And that improved the engine grills. One of the final stages is to apply highlights and chipping. For this life colour references were used as they're slightly more controllable and opacity is slightly better. Again, you just want to keep it subtle but add little tiny lighter chips along areas of where and where paint would get chipped. Here you can see the model just being chipped in that fashion. It was done on the hull as well and anywhere where there would be wear and tear. What you do then is go for a dark rust colour and again keeping it very subtle just pick out some of the insides of those lighter chips to depict metal that's been worn right down to the raw metal underneath and has started to rust. You can tone down the effect with something like the panel accent colour or any other kind of wash just to blend all those chips in so they don't jump out too much and look a bit more subtle and realistic. Final touch up and the model is complete. This was a real joy to build. Sometimes building an old kit that's less technologically advanced is just as much fun. Upgrading this to modern standards was really enjoyable. And again, it was a real thrill to try and get an authentic looking uniform base colour. In the end, we got a fairly grimy vehicle, but hopefully a realistic one. You can of course also give us a Facebook like over on Facebook, and we'd really appreciate that. It's a great way to show your support for what we do. We hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and do subscribe to the channel for updates whenever we release a video. Thanks for watching and bye. Subscribe for our latest videos.